All right, what's going on, Eric? Um, first off, I take a more platform agnostic point of view. Um, and second of all, me and Splitpaw, or Ubenite, or Brady, or whatever you want to call them, um, are of like mind. Um, we both, are, I, let me rephrase, I contribute to his Ubenite.com page. Um, and I take more of the platform agnostic point of view he tends to. I run OS ten. I run Windows and Linux. I have an older iBook G4, so I am kind of stuck on Leopard right now. Um, my IBM ThinkPad that I have runs Linux Mint. My main machine is a custom built because I like to tinker. Oh, you know, I like it would be you know the car equivalent basically. If it's not pretty, but it's functional, at least for me. You know, so and that machine runs Windows 7 and runs a uh, uh, distro called Moon OS. All the you know, I, I prefer Ubuntu based distros if I'm running Linux. Now, some of the things I have an issue with that you mentioned in Linux or open source in general, I should say, the development model is slower. It, it really depends on what you mean by development. Um, if you're talking core kernel, um, there's something, there's some stupidly astronomical amount of commits to the Linux kernel in a, on a daily basis. Um, I believe it's under one of the Google talks by uh, Greg something or I can't remember. He's uh, one of the Linux kernel maintainers. He can, uh, does stuff with USB ports and stuff, uh, some structures. But Linux doesn't innovate, um, you know, doesn't see new features and all this other stuff. There are some things within proprietary systems that we don't see. Um, there's some stuff that NVIDIA offers that we don't see. There's some stuff like on a graphics card wise that ATI does that we don't see from a proprietary point of view. So I will give you that. Um, but that's a proprietary company because they're not quite sure how to deal with an open source operating system. You know, unfortunately, most of the model is based on closed source software. So, um, you know, Linux does have certain features first. Um, I noticed someone on your video had commented that Windows had. Uh, 7 had 3.0 USB 3.0 support. Technically, actually, Linux got that first with the 2.6.31 uh, kernel. So, actually, Linux had USB 3.0 support first. That was a contrib uh, contribution by Intel. So, it all depends on how you look at it. Um, you know, for me, I use open source software not because it's cheap, it's free, or whatever. It's because where I run all these other systems, it's consistency on all three app, uh, three platforms for me. I don't have, you know, if I'm doing a document in open office. I don't have to worry about file conversion, so I try sending it to my Windows 7 machine. You know, I don't have to hope that the file conversion to you know, RTF or DocX or any of these other file formats might work. So if I'm running like IBM OS Symphony and I save it as an ODF or ODT, and I'm running that on Windows and I'm running that on OS 10, well, guess what? I'm pretty sure it's going to work and the conversion is going to come out fine. So, to me, that is what I need. I need consistency. I need less headaches. So, you know, things like Pigeon Gimp and all that kind of stuff, I run those. I have higher end programs also, though. You know, the, like the Gimp to me is not so much like it, it's powerful. 
the UI could use some work, definitely. Um, but it's not meant to be a Photoshop replacement. There are features in Photoshop that if you're a professional photographer that you're going to need that the GIMP just doesn't offer. You can do a lot of stuff in the GIMP, but it's just not going to cut it. And that's fine. And yes, unfortunately, that means you're going to have to run Windows or OS 10 or whatnot in, in VM or whatever. So for me, I try to find be it web based applications or open source, cross platform, be it paid for, free, doesn't matter. If I can find software that will run on all three platforms, then I am content. And unfortunately, it's the 10% that are speaking for most Linux users that are the vocal jackass minority zealots that need to shut the hell up. Because personally, I say the development model for open source is better than proprietary software because it keeps your competition more honest and it keeps your competition on its toes if everything's out in the open. But that's my opinion. Things that Apple have done, I love. They contributed Grand Central, which is the Speed Boost and the Snow Leopard as open source, the FreeBSD base for OS X. They maintain the open open AL uh, open audio library for open source. They even have an open source programs page on their main site. You're not gonna see that from from Windows ever. You know you can go and download things from like Adium and all these other programs completely from Apple, which is what I love. They acknowledge that open source is a part of the ecosystem. That is my gripe with Windows. They don't acknowledge it. Now, from a hardware point of view, there are some things that I don't like about Apple. I don't like the system lockdown, but I understand the system lockdown. And it's not really a system lockdown either. It's a more limited choice. You still have choice. It's just more limited on your hardware specs. And it's understandable, it creates less headaches, it's an easier time as far as customer support, it provides better customer support. Which, by the way, I believe the last time they had a survey, Apple had 80% customer satisfaction, which in the computer industry and computer support, that's really damn good. The company that was actually closest behind it as far as like Windows-based machines was actually Gateway at 62, 63%. Yeah. Um, Dell, HP, you guys need to really learn to, you know, take a cue from Apple. But, you know, OS X has issues, Linux has issues. It's what you expect out of your operating system. What do you expect out of your software? You know, yeah, I need software consistency in my opinion, and for me. So, if I can get that with open source, or if I can find an application that has more features and I can pay for it, then I'll pay for I'll pay for the application and run it across all three. What the hell do I care? You know, it still gives me the software consistency I need. So that's my outlook on it. Um, again, to me, it's the ten percent Linux open source flaws, boss. Zealots that are making the ninety percent of the other, you know, bit Linux user, open source users in general look bad. You know, that's just my point. So.